Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. We're going to go over the history of Israel, right? You're going to hear me speak about Israel or the Jews a lot. That's what the Bible is about. The Bible is about Israel. The Bible is about the Jews. The Jews, through history, have been taken, if you look at the Bible, have been taken into plenty of captivities. And at the end of those captivities, they lost their minds. They forgot who they were. They were scattered and they were separated from their homeland. And today, there's a big mystery of who the Israelites are, who are the ten tribes and who, where they at, where do they reside? And we hope to explore that through our slideshow and through the Bible. All right, Israel United in Christ. Our mission, this is a message from our Bishop Nick Penn. Israel United in Christ Incorporated was founded in 2003. Our goal is to change the hearts and the minds of our people. Blacks and Hispanics must learn the truth that they are the biblical 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Disobedience to God's laws has been the root of, our, of all our troubles. Blacks and Hispanics everywhere suffer the same racial, social, economic problems worldwide. Voting has not helped us. Christian churches have failed us. And that's important. It's very important. Can I get Matthew 24? I'm going to read Matthew 24. That was prophesied that the Christian church would fail the nation of Israel. It's time for a change. In these last days, we must give the Bible, the Bible's medicine to sick people. Then and only then will things begin to change. Can I get that in uh, verse 5? Is it verse 5 or 24? Give me verse 5. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 5. Read. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Many shall come in the name of Christ, calling themselves Christians, holding up the Holy Bible, converting people to an idea, a man-made philosophy that has nothing to do with worshiping him, changing the message of God. That has happened unto our people. The Lord said when he was walking the earth, be careful or be cautious that what? No man does what? That no man deceive. That no man deceive you, that no man lies to you, that no man tricks you. Be cautious of the words that I'm telling you to be sure that I'm not tricking you. It's what I'm telling you. And the only way we know that a person is being deceitful or truthful is if we compare it to the source information that they're referencing. I'm referencing the Bible. Everything that I'm saying today, everything you're going to see here, can be found in the Bible. A lot of things that we read um, or a lot of things that we see in the earth today that claim to be of the Bible is not even of the Bible. How you doing, my brother? Glad to see you. You have good spirits, it looks like. Good, good. I want you guys to open up that, that, that pamphlet that you guys have. There's an image of Jesus Christ in there. Jesus Christ said, beware that no man deceives you. That's an image that has deceived our people for a very long time, claiming to be the image of Jesus, right? And we, we failed to heed his, his warning. His warning was, be careful. Now, if you look at the image, I want you guys to hold it up and show me which one is Jesus on all those pictures. How does he look? Mordecai, see, what, see if they can tell you how he looks. See, see, who, see who they point out as being Jesus. Can we get him one as well? You can, you can step down on your um, reading. Let him get a fly. Let him point out Jesus. Point him out. Which one? Okay, cool, cool. She pointed him out in the back. She pointed out Jesus. You 
see him here? Who is this? Is that Jesus? That's me? You look like me? You look like you. Okay, so we're going to get into it. Christ said what? Read that again, please. Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Many shall come in the name of Christ, saying that I am Christ. Look at that. Look at these images. That image has permeated the world over and over. Yet we find not that image in the Bible. We, as men and women of God, we've never, when I was growing up, we searched who that could possibly be. We just took the church's word for it that that might be how it looked. We understand that it was a depiction, but that depiction is an actor. That depiction is actually a man named Caesar Borgia. He was the illegitimate son of Pope Alexander VI, right? That was a real man that walked the earth. Christ was a real man that walked the earth, but he did not live the life of Christ. He was the Pope's son. The Pope's son was killed. And in order to appease the sympathy that he had or the sadness that he had, he hired men to paint his son. And over the course of time, men began, in order to pay homage to this Pope or show this Pope reverence and to mourn with this Pope, they began to honor that image. They began to honor that image. And over time, they gave that image the life of Christ, right? What's the next image? Okay, let's, let's start at 15, let's start at the top. Beware lest any man deceive you. We've been deceived in this earth, all right? We've been deceived in this earth. We've been deceived by the thought that we're not even God's people. The thought that God's people are done away with and that he's dealing with a new set of people. The Lord said there's no end of all the people, right? There's no end, and he changes not. So the promise that he made to our forefathers, that promise lasts until the end of time. <laughs> What's that promise? We're gonna get into that promise. But let's read, Deuteronomy 28 and 15. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Uh-huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So curses are a bad thing the Lord prophesied to have happen to our people. He said that if you don't hearken or listen to the voice of God, bad things are going to come upon you. Where do we find the voice of God? If we find the voice today in the King James Version Bible or the Holy Bible. That's where we find the voice of God. His instructions or his commandments are recorded in the Bible. A lot of our people don't hearken to God at all. Don't. Um, give me uh, Sirach uh, 38, 38 15. A lot of us do not hearken to God, and there's consequences for not listening, right? Read. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 38 and verse 15. Read. He that sinneth before his maker. He that does what? He that sinneth before his maker. Sinneth. Listen, we are all sinners, right? We are all walking this walk trying to figure out how to serve the Lord. But this particular sinner is a perpetual and habitual sinner that understands that they don't give a two cents about what the Lord has to say. Like the Lord would tell you, I want you to walk in this certain fashion. And they'd be like, okay, I understand that, but I still want to because of my upbringing. I still want to because of how I feel a certain situation should be. I'm going to walk how I feel is good for me to walk. He said, this is going to happen for that person. Read. Let him fall. Let him what? The, let him fall. Let him be destroyed or let him be in constant need. Unto who? Into the hand of the physician. Let the doctors have. Let you suffer sickness. Let you suffer illnesses. Let you suffer plagues. Fall into the hand of the physicians because I am trying to heal you. Because our nation as a people, we're sick as a nation. 
right? And we don't want the medicine that the Lord has to give us to make us learn how to love one another, how to care for one another, right? How to actually take care of our responsibilities. Since we don't want to do that, how he prescribed, how he prescribed it, he said, fall into the hand of the physician. Those men who want to make money, make money off of you, fall into their hands. See if they're going to have your best interests at heart. See if they're going to care about your well-being or your mental estate. Fall into the hand of the physician. Um, what's that scripture? I will keep the in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Give me that. The Lord is vicious. And he can be a, an enemy unto you if you be an enemy unto him. But if you take heed to his commandments, he's going to keep you in a good estate. Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially. Let's keep reading. Oh. He will keep their peace. <clears throat> this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 16. Read. Curse shall not be in the city. Uh -huh. And curse shall not be in the field. So the Lord pronounced curses on us in the city and in the field for not obeying him. If you read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1 through 14, the children of Israel, as he was speaking to, as Moses was speaking to, he promised them blessings if the nation as a whole hearkened to him. But 15 through 68, which we are going through now, he promised hardship, right? The curses. Back in 1921, this is a curse in the city that happened in Oakland, or I'm sorry, Oklahoma. This is the Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre. Anybody heard of that from 1921? What was that about? Can you enlighten us on what the Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre was about? Oh, Yeah. They got an inscription on this picture that says, Little Africa, Tulsa race riot, June 1st, 1921. Who heard of Black Wall Street? Have you heard of Black Wall Street? You've heard of Black Wall Street? What was Black Wall Street? It's like a dead street. But like all the comedians are dead. We have all the banks, all the all kinds of things. Everything. Everything that an economy needs to thrive and survive, Black Wall Street was dead. Yeah. Right? That was here. I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. There was also in other places. We had places in St. Louis that was majority black owned, right? This is coming out of slavery. Think about it, 1865. 1865, we was given emancipation. Or 1863, 1865 it was official everywhere. 1863, we were given emancipation, having worked to the bone under captivity. 65 was the latest date, right, because it went into effect in 63. But then in 65 down in Texas, some of our brothers and sisters didn't realize it. Right. right. So it was official in 65. So officially, we had been out of captivity for a while. 1921. We thrived. We bounced back quick. Right? And we started to come together, put our money together, understanding that we just came out of this terrible oppression. Right? We put our money together and we made places like this. But because of the hatred that was upon us by the people who had us in captivity, hating the fact that we're not thriving without them, right? They took any charge against us. We whistled at a woman. We raped somebody. We stole something. It could have been fought, it could have been fraudulent. Well, it could have been valid, but they made us all pay for it by bombing, killing, and setting a fire in places like Black Wall Street. Why make our economy, economy suffer? Why does our economy have to suffer if one man transgressed? If another man kills somebody, why does everybody's families and their livelihood have to suffer for it? That's not normal, is what I'm trying to get to. That's a curse. The Lord said we would be cursed in the city. 
That's true. Lake Lanier, formerly known as Oscarville, Georgia. Lake Lanier was another popular establishment that our people put together, but it's now a lake. They flooded it, and it is now a lake. Why? Because even when we were in slavery, guess what? We learned about Jesus through whom? Did we learn it through our forefathers? Did we learn it through our ancestors? How do we learn how to serve God in captivity? You see, it. how do we learn? How do we learn how to serve God when we were captive? Who told us how to, who, how do we learn how to worship God when we were captive, when we were slaves? Who taught us that? Who taught us how to worship Jesus? Who taught us how to pray with our hands together? And who taught them? Who said it again? Church, the establishment. Who ran the establishment? It wasn't, it wasn't us. So we never really knew how to serve God coming out of captivity. So when we came out of captivity, we had the same mindset to serve Jesus or serve God the way we were taught to. Not according to God, but according to man's doctrine, man's philosophy, right? And us not worshiping God how we supposed to worship God, like on Saturdays, today, we supposed to worship him in a holy manner. Give me uh, Exodus 20 and 8. Let's read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Read. Remember the Sabbath day. What? Remember the Sabbath you day. You have to remember the Sabbath day. When we were in captivity, we wasn't keeping the Sabbath day. We forgot the Sabbath day. Our forefathers who spoke our home language from the land that we were at, they were killed. They were taken away. Families split up. So now, all we have to learn from is each other and those that want us to do their bidding. They're not teaching us to remember the Sabbath day. They're teaching us, remember to get up and pick that cotton. Remember to tell if your brother is attempting to, to run away. God is not in the mix. Because that's, in the Bible, scriptures that tell us how long a man is supposed to work in servitude for another man and the beatings and the lynchings and the floggings and the splitting up of the families and the rape, that's not mentioned on how to have a man work for you, right? A servant in the Bible is more like an employee. What we experienced before this was hell and torture, it was a curse. The Lord said that that would happen to us because we did not remember the Sabbath day. Read. To keep it holy. To keep it holy, how do we keep it holy? Six days, you just, we, we congregate. That's one way to keep it holy. This is another way to keep it holy, you read? Six days shall thou labor. Six days you labor, six days you do your work, six days you make your money. And do all thy work. Uh-huh. But the seventh day, which is today, the seventh day of the week, is the Sabbath of the Lord thy it's God. Sabbath. It's a holy day. Read. In it thou shalt do any work. Thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. So you, the strangers that live amongst you, children of Israel, your businesses, like if you had an automatic system set up to make money, that has to stop on the Sabbath day. Your cattle, that would be considered like, I don't know, maybe a Shopify store for anybody's computer Sabbath an online business store. You gotta cut that off on the Sabbath day and give all your focus and attention to the Lord. That's one way we keep the Sabbath day home, right? Give me that and I say it. Because I said earlier that the Lord, if you don't listen to him, he'll allow you to be overcome by sickness, right? How can we, over, how can we avoid that? Read. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 26 and verse three. Read. That will keep him in perfect peace. The Lord will keep him in perfect peace. Meaning your mental fa faculties will be peaceful. You're not stressing. You're not worrying. The Lord's going to keep you in perfect peace. He wants you to be at peace. But how do you get that peace? Whose mind is stayed on thee. Your mind has to be stayed on the Lord. Let me Joshua 1 and 8 have to finish that. Because he trusted in thee. Because you trust, you trust in the Lord. 
You trust in the Lord to make sure all your decisions are in line with his will. We find his will in the Bible. You're not no longer listening to men and saying, that's a great speech, a great sermon, and then you're dancing because you have the opportunity to exercise. No. We actually hear it hearkening because we're mature enough to process what's going on, and now we can read. Remember back in these times, before this time, they wouldn't allow us to read. Why do you think that is? It was, a, it was a crime to be caught reading. Why do you think that is? Because we would know, we would find out that the things that were being practiced is not aligned with God's will. So we have to keep our mind on par with God's will, and he's going to keep it at peace. Read. This is the book of Joshua. Chapter 1 and verse 8. Read. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. The Bible should always be your meditation. You wake up in the morning, you meditate on the words of God. Throughout the day, you're looking through the scriptures and you're reading the scriptures and you're meditating how this can actually help the next man. This can help the next sister. This can help your children, your grandchildren. Right? The word of God. You should be meditating on it. Read. But thou shalt meditate therein. Day and night. Keeping it on your mind. Day and night. Read. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. We observe the soap operas. We observe entertainment. We observe every different thing in the earth that keeps us distracted. And we stay in this lower state. And I'm talking us as a nation. One or two of y'all might be astute in the knowledge of God. But as a nation, we all have to do what I'm doing. And that's Walk in the walk, live in the walk, meditating in the word, passing it on to my brothers and sisters that I meet, wherever I met. Read. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. That's the prosperity doctrine right there. The prosperity doctrine is not sow a seed or pay a tithe, sow a seed. That ain't money ain't the prosperity. No, your way is gonna be prosperous. Everything you do, everything you touch, your mindset, your peace is gonna come. You're going to have good success when the Lord is first. Okay? So that's what we're going to establish here. We're going to establish the Lord first and foremost over everything. Of everything we've learned, we got to subdue that understanding. we got to hold that understanding at bay because it was taught to us erroneously. The images that you see in that pamphlet that I gave you was taught to us in error. We have been deceived. So we have to push all that to the side and think as little children. Remember, the kingdom of heaven is for whom? Those who come as little children. Little children don't question when their father, their mother is teaching them something. You got something to say? I thought oh, you raised your hand. No. Right? A child, you tell a child the sky's blue, they're not gonna say, no, it's not. It's red, it's yellow, it's green. They're not gonna do that. They're gonna listen to what you're saying. And that's how the Lord said we should come to him as little children. I had to humble down everything I knew in order to accept what the Lord had for me to learn. Right? So we're cursed in the city. Read. Or oh, next slide, please. Deuteronomy 28, uh, 17, or 16. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 16. 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. We talked about some of the curses that happened to us in the city back in the past. In the city today, some of the curses that our people face is drug abuse. Some of the curses our people face in the city is alcoholism. Prostitution, murder, hatred, single family homes. Those are some of the curses that our people face in the city today. The curses weren't just for back then, they still happen today. Right? Too many killings. Too many killings. Every day. Every day. When will it stop? Why, why would it, how can it stop? You can't even sit in your house. You can't, because why? The bullets have come through the window. Yeah, and there was a two year old boy. Really? And a little boy, the three-year-old boy, went into the mother's purse, took the gun, and shot his brother. And the brother, the little boy that was two years old, died. Now that's 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 parental negligence. Like the mother should have had that thing put up somewhere. The thing I don't understand is why don't they get rid of these guns? Like they say they're guns. Why is it that there's so many damn guns? And, you know, so many games, so you can't even, you can't even go out at night. That's right. You know the reason why? 
Why? There's guns and stuff like that. They can stop it if they want to. Right. But they don't want to stop it. Why do you think that is? Because one thing is us, not, I'm, I'm not prejudiced in that exactly. You're not okay. teaching that either. Okay? Just saying, what's the being black people? Yeah. No more social security. Okay? You help us out. We are helping them out. Social Security has its benefits, though. I had a little boy on TV yesterday say, we had the past 24 we had life. Why would you think like that? You know why? Because he don't have a father here. He don't have any hope. No. To is. see past tomorrow. Why is that? Because he don't know who he is. The Lord said he would take that from us, but he would bring you back hope again in the end. Because it's more to life than just living to the age of 18. That's more to life than just Sleep with however many people you can sleep with. It's more to life than getting high. It's more to life than that. And then hopefully you make it to 24. And then what? We don't even plan for what's going to happen after we're 24. Because we think we're going to die young. That's a curse. That's a curse in the city. Kids are dying young in school because of gun violence. Kids are being homeschooled now. Yep. Because they're afraid to go to school. Yep. And their parents won't send them. Yep. That's absolutely correct. Alright, next slide, please. So, curse shall we be in the city and read. And curse shall thou be in the field. And curse shall thou be in the field. If you look at these images, if y'all can take a look at the screen, we have some images of our four parents. This child looks to be about four or five years old. Four at the most. He has a satchel on his back, and he's picking cotton. That was a way of life for us. That's not life. You know, the Lord gave us the world, but we didn't have to work. All we had to do was serve him. We could tend to our crops, yeah, tend to our herbs, tend to each other. But this is forced. Look at his face. That's not a man happy to serve what's his. No. Look at that. Look at these faces. Y'all can't see them, but y'all, if y'all need to get closer to them, look. By all means, please do so. We got our mothers dressed in dresses in the field. You got families in the field. And none of them look happy. That was arduous work, sun up to sundown. Every day of the week except Sunday. Right? We switched there, my so this is a curse in the field. Let's go back to one, one uh, a curse that was in the city. Read that in Jeremiah. This is the book of Jeremiah. This is what you talked about in Gary, Indiana, right? And this is this also happens in all the cities, right? Read chapter nine and verse twenty-one. Read for death is come up into our window. What has come up into our windows? Death is come up into our windows. So death has come up into our windows. Read. And is entered into our places. And enter into the house. places where we dwell. House. Say that again. We house. house. We enter into our palaces. Uh, and into our windows and entered into our palaces. That's drive by shoes. Right? The Bible knows his, the people who it's referring to. Our uh, people live wild and reckless. They was living wild and reckless then, they're living wild and reckless now. The and death that comes through our windows. We don't see that happening downtown. We don't see that happening yeah, in Boys Town. To we see that happening in our communities where the gangs are. We see that. Bullets but coming the through the windows. Kids hang around with kids that are in gangs. Absolutely. That and has to change. Know, it has to change. It's gonna change when we start putting God first. We first and foremost have to learn God. We don't know God. When you yourself know God and learn God, you're gonna move with a different fear. When you know God yourself and understand that he's the author of life and death, of healing and wounding, when it's him, you're going to move different. We're going to teach our children different. When you understand that you have to stop giving Satan so much power, saying everything that's bad in the world is because of him, no. Everything that's bad in the world is because we are disobedient to God. We got to learn to take ownership of our part in the covenant that we broke with our father. And this is a result of our covenant breaking. We said we'll keep your commandments, Lord. But he warned us, you're gonna be cursing the city and in the field, picking tobacco, 
uh, today. We have some of our Northern Kingdom brothers working in the Chiquita farms, making pennies on the dollar. Uh, read. To cut out the children from without. Uh, go back to Deuteronomy 20. So a lot of kids get killed by straight bullets that enter in through your walls, through your windows. That's just a test to who the children of Israel are. Read. Curse shall thou be in the city. Uh-huh. And curse shall thou be in the field. Read. Curse shall thou curse shall be thy basket and uh -huh. thy store. The red summer of 1919. Right, here's a picture of some armed guards coming into one of our neighborhoods and then the aftermath of what it looked like. These are two different locations, but the same thing that happened here happened all over in the summer of 1919 to our community. Right? Riots, murders, destruction of properties, repossession of properties, running our people off of their properties and claiming the properties, right? Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Right? Basket goes into our ability to purchase, our ability to buy. We don't have establishments set up, right? We always have to go somewhere to spend our money. I can't like trade with you. I can't trade with you. I can't trade with your people. Why? Our baskets have been cursed. Our store, our ability to store or save is cursed. We'd be lucky if we got $50 in saving. Anything we do have in saving, we have to allocate it or save it for a rainy day. We don't save it just because I'm saving it to build my people up. No, I'm saving it so I ain't okay. I'm, I'm saving it so that I ain't good. The thought isn't nation minded. The thought behind your savings is me. But we're a nation, we're a community, we're a people. We're supposed to look out for each other. If I'm looking out for him, and he's looking out for him, and she's looking out for me, we good. But if I'm just looking out for myself, I'm not knowing if he or she's good or not. Because I don't care. We have to learn to care for one another again. We cold. We very cold as a people towards one another. And the Lord said that that has to change. That has to change. But until that change, we're going to continue to be suffering in our ability to have and our ability to save. Curse shall thou, curse shall be the fruit of thy body. The fruit of thy body. That's going into your children. The Lord said your children are going to be cursed. If you think about what happened to the Native American Indians, the Mexicans, when they were on this land first and foremost, the conquistadors came here. What did they do when they got here? They ravaged the land. First they came with their peaceable people speaking with the Bible, but they were killing our people at the same time. If you look here, there's a woman hanging. Attached to her is her offspring or the fruit of her body, hanging from her thigh with a cord around his neck and around her waist. All right? Here, one of the conquistadors has a baby that he split in half in each of his hands. And dogs are actually eating the flesh of that child. That's a depiction of what happened when the conquistadors came here. We celebrate Thanksgiving every year, commemorating their arrival into the Americas. Their arrival into the Americas was not a peaceful time. It was about colonization. It was about land appropriation. It was, uh, it was about murder. Nothing is good about Thanksgiving. Right, but we give it this, this fuzzy good feeling because that's what we were taught. But if you just do the research yourself, you will see that that's the most bloodiest holiday that you could ever commemorate. Remember, holidays are supposed to commemorate or memorialize an event, something that happened. The Sabbath day is a high holy day of the Lord which commemorates the rest that his children are going to receive once they learn to obey him. It commemorates the actual rest that the Lord put together after he made his creation. It commemorates something righteous. What righteous does Thanksgiving commemorate? Nothing. I know y'all did y'all history. Y'all know what it means. 
and look a little deep and figure out what are we actually celebrating on Thanksgiving, right? Another version of the fruits of our bodies being used in an ill manner. If you look here, that's an alligator. The way they used to catch the alligators for the gator shoes and the gator belts or whatever they use the gator skins for, they use our children as bait. They sit our crying babies out by the bank, and that crying baby would attract the alligators, the crocodiles. And the crocodile, sometimes he was successful at getting the baby, and then the men who was trapping alligators caught him. Sometimes they caught him before they got the babies, but nonetheless, our babies were used as bait. That's history, you can look that up yourself. Gator baits, that was the practice. So that's a reflection of us having the fruit of our bodies cursed. The fruit of our bodies is still cursed today, standing on corners, filling up prison houses, listening to this whack music or this whack entertainment, right? And feeding into it and becoming another statistic. The fruits of our bodies are cursed. They are a paycheck to organizations that wants to fill up coffins, that wants to fill up jail cells that wants to sell bullets, that wants to sell Plan B pills, that wants to sell abortion, that wants to sell liquor, right? Our children are profitable because of our lack of knowledge of the Lord. They're profitable to men seeking to profit off of our ignorance, right? Give me Judith 8. We need that. That's very important. Judith 8, I think it's 24. Well, read now therefore, oh brothers, brethren, you guys, you sisters, y'all are my brethren, y'all are my family, right? Read. Let us show an example. Let us show an example. I'm showing the example of, hey, I went and I did the research. Somebody took time out with me and showed me the research. And I'm practicing and I'm walking. And they encouraged me to practice and walk the, the walk of the Lord. So let us be an example to do what? To our brethren. Uh huh. Because their hearts depend on they us. They depend on us and they don't even know it. That'll be much more efficient or effective than praying for our brothers. Because when we pray for our brothers, there's a criteria that must be met before we can even pray. Or the Lord won't even hear your prayers. So, first and foremost, we need to get ourselves together. We need to be an example for our brothers and sisters. Praying won't work. Why? Go and read that. In, um, John 9. John 9 and 31. Read that real quick. We want to make sure we on point in everything. We're not going to get it all right in the beginning, but we're going to work at it. Read. John 9 and 31. It's the book of John, chapter 9 and verse 31. Uh -huh. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. What? God heareth not sinners. What's a sinner? Anybody got the answer? You was about to say it. Oh, it was. <laughs> oh, okay. A sinner? By definition, what the Bible defines a sinner as? Okay, I like that. That's an honest answer. But remember what I said, we got to pull everything from the scripture. So we're going to pull from the scriptures what a sinner is. Go ahead, read. Um, <coughs> first John. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Uh huh. Whosoever committed sin, you hear that? Whoever committed sin does what? Transgressing also the law. Uh huh. For sin this is. This is sin. Sin is what? For sin is the transgression. To transgress or go against or go opposite of the uh, law. law. If you go opposite of the law, that's what sin means. The law says a woman should not wear that which pertains unto a man, meaning a woman shouldn't be wearing pants. If a woman is wearing pants, she's in the midst of sin. Once she learns that she's not supposed to wear pants, she changes over the course of time. She ain't going to get it right off, but eventually she's going to change. The Bible says you should not defile your temple as far as what you put in it and consume as food. One of the food items that we're not supposed to consume is pork. You consume pork, you consume catfish, you consume shrimp, crab, lobster, that's sin. Because the Lord said, don't do it. This is my law. You're going against the law, 
you're in sin. So if you're in the midst of sin and not trying to get out of that sin by actively changing your behavior, go back to John 9, 31, your prayers don't mean nothing. John 9, 31, read it. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, uh -huh. but if any man be a worshiper of God. So you want to worship God, right? And you want to do what? And doeth his will. You want to do his will. His will is, I say do A, B, and C, and you do exactly that. That's what his will is. You read that in Psalms 40 and 8. I delight to do thy will. Thy law is within my heart, David said. The law of God is the will of God. So those who are doing the will of God or doing the laws of God, them he heareth. So if you're sitting up prayers and you're not doing the will of God, it really does you no service. It does the person you're praying for no service. So what we have to learn how to do is come back to serve him. Then pray. So now, we read Judith 8, 24 again. We have to be that example. Go ahead. <coughs> Judith 8, 24. This is the book of Judith, chapter 8 and verse 24. Uh -huh. Now therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren because their hearts depend on, upon us, and the sanctuary, and the house, and the altar rest upon us. And the altar rest upon us. Who's that, John 3, 5 and 20? That's the book of Judah, chapter 5 and verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God. So what's happening is there are some enemies of the nation of Israel. They're looking and seeing what's the source of their strength, what's the source of their power. How come they're not bowing down like everybody else? Because at this time, these men had the nations in fear. But the children of Israel, the sons and daughters of God, they was like, I feel God. I'm not bowing down to you. I'm not paying taxes to you. I'm not coming and worshiping your God, how you say we should worship your God. Because I fear God. That's what they were telling. Well, that's the knowledge that they had of the children of Israel back then. Read. One second, let me continue this and then I'll get to you. Go ahead, read. Let us consider. Let us consider. Let us think. What? That this shall be their ruin. Uh-huh. And let us go up and we shall overcome them. Uh-huh. But if they but if there be no iniquity in but their But if there's no sinning, what's gonna happen? Let my Lord now pass by. Let us pass by. So if the children of Israel are in sin, they can be overcome. They can be destroyed. They can be prayed for the nations. They can be easy pickings because the Lord's not with them. But if they're not committing sin, they're hearkening to God, they're being an example for their brother, they say, hold on, let me consider what I do to these people because if I transgress against them, their Lord is going to fight for them. Our Lord hasn't been fighting for us. Because we've, for a very long time, been in the midst of sin, not knowing how to worship them. Read. Lest their Lord defend them, and their God be for them, and we become a reproach I want God. Our I want God for me. You want God for you? You want God for you? Uh, absolutely. You want God for you? Yes. So you have to do what it is he's saying to you. And the first thing I stated was, be careful that you're not deceived. So everything that you've learned thus far about God, you have to now check that against what we're reading. Read. Was that it? That's it. Let's go back to the uh, slide. You had a question? Yeah. When you said women are sinners when they wear pants, mm -hmm. there are some churches that allow women to wear pants. Are they, now, you know? Now, now. Yeah, now they're allowing them to wear pants instead of dresses. Where was that change instituted in the Bible? If that change it was wasn't. instituted in the Bible, then we're going to run with it. But if it wasn't, we got to No, it wasn't God. changed. Right. So now we have to change the fact that man said you can do this now and figure out, okay, why can we do this? Why, why are you saying... Why is it that we can wear pants yeah. instead of wearing dresses? Ask the priest, why can't we wear pants? What was the change? I just read in Judith 24. Yeah. If they, in the midst of sin, that God's not gonna fight for them. So you gotta think somebody wants me to be in a state where yeah, God I not fighting for me. I think it's wrong. It is wrong. Because when you go to church, 
you're supposed to come in a dress mm -hmm. and you're supposed to come in high heels. You're not supposed to come to. I don't know about high heels. heels. It's not mandatory to wear high heels. Well, but if that's what you want to wear, that's what you can wear. But it's what, not mandatory. That's what um, the priest where I go. Okay. You know, I go to the pretty boys that I have to church. Okay. That's right. that's not in the Bible either. No, it's not. No, nope. that's a philosophy of man. That's a deception of man coming to you. The Lord says you got to change. He said, remember, you can't get the kingdom of heaven unless you come as a little child. He's talking to wrong people, so this wrong person has to change. So it's not coming as you are. Yes, you can come to me with all your your mess ups and your hang ups. Come to me like that, but you got to change. You got to be converted. Right? Yeah. Don't come as you are and stay as you are. No, you have to come to me how you are and change. That's what the Lord says. Uh, what you was going to read? I, I don't know that. You can read that. Read it. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. You got a question? It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14 and verse 22. Read. Thou shalt truly tithe all the, all the increase of thy seed. He's talking about tithe. He said you should tithe the increase of what? Thy seed. Thy seed. Is that seed talking about money? Read. That the field bringeth forth year by year. The field brings forth crops from a seed that you plant. So year by year, what you uh, crops bring forth, that's what you're supposed to tithe, the Lord said, read. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. You should do what? Eat before the Lord thy God. Read. In the place which he shall choose to place his name there. So these tithes are supposed to be eaten as well. Read. The tide of thy corn. Uh oh, tide of corn. Of yeah. thy wine. Of thy wine. Of thy oil. Of thy oil. And the firstlings of thy herd and of thy flocks. And of the, I ain't heard money yet. Uh, uh. <laughs> Read it. That thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. You sacrifice these things to the Lord, and it's going to teach you to fear the Lord. It's, the laws of God are spiritual. When you say, I, I don't think that'll work, that ain't going to put fear in me. No. Yes, it will. Because when you offering up to the Lord, he said he's going to protect your crops. We have to learn to fear the Lord. Learn to listen to what he says do and do it. Our not people say, what you earn. Not to the simple what you earn. Not to the simple what you earn. None of that. If you want to give a, a um, donation to the church for a specific reason, do that. But that has to go for the function of the church. For the members of the church and not to pay the pastor's bills at home to fund his lifestyle. No, that's not how the forefathers rolled. That's not, they all had jobs. We got jobs. We don't live off the congregation. I got to go to work just like you. We are not different. The only difference we have is I've studied this 
a little longer than you got. That's it. The way he wants it, I've studied it long. This thing that I'm wearing right here, fringes, the Lord wants this. I've been wearing these longer than you. That's all. I just got a different time in. So how do I look puffing myself up and demanding that y'all give me your money? That's mm -hmm. pimp prostitute mentality. Where do we learn that from? We look out for each other. We don't look out for self. For too long we've been looking out for self. And these Christian churches repeat the same cycle. Read that. This, this, is, this is why we tithe. Read. This is the book of Malachi. Chapter when, when it was a law, this is why we would tithe. Read. Chapter 3 and verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. That there may be meat in the house for the other Lord. Do we have any plots of land where we can grow crops? Do we have, we don't have it. It's virtually impossible for us to do that. It's virtually impossible for us to bring tithes to the Lord's house. Any house isn't the Lord's house. The Lord's house was in Jerusalem. You read about Solomon building it in the book of 1 Kings. Titus and Vespasian in 70 AD, they destroyed Jerusalem right along with the temple of God where you would store the Lord's tithes. So if anybody's tithing outside of Jerusalem, you're not even upholding the law like the law is supposed to be upheld anyway. Read and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, cause your crops to receive rain. The Lord, he's responsible for it raining and not. That's the Lord's duty. That's his function. That's his job. He said, give me my tithe. Give me an offering to show that you appreciate the abundance that I've given you. And I'll do something for you. Read. And pour you out a blessing uh -huh. that there that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Not be room enough to receive it. Not talking about, man, I'm going to open up your bank account and you're going to get a blessing so big that you ain't going to be able to receive No, it's talking about, man, I'm going to bless your land. Your soil is going to be so fertile. The rain is going to come down and it's going to uh, abundantly bless your crops and you're going to be able to store. Remember the basket in the store? Our basket in the store was being affected. Our basket in the store was affected because by the time we was in slavery, we couldn't store anything. We couldn't plant for ourselves. We couldn't offer the Lord his time. He's going to affect all that. But during this time, when we were not in captivity, we had the ability to store. That's why the blessing was going to be so plentiful. I don't know where to put all this stuff. It's, it's a lot of growth that we got this year. He said, I'm going to bless you like that. Read it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I will rebuke the devourer. The devourer were worms or anything that would destroy your crops. You tithe to me, you show me my respect, and I'm going to hold at bay all those germs, all those diseases, all those worms, all of those insects, the locusts. He said, I will rebuke them. Remember in, 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 in the time of Egypt, our people were in Egypt under bondage to Pharaoh. He caused the locusts to destroy the crops. He said, I will rebuke these devourers. I will make them have a spirit on them to not touch your crops. But if you don't want to obey me, guess what? I can cause havoc. I can wreak havoc on everything that is yours. Right? Uh, go ahead and read and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. He shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Uh -huh. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. So if you know anything about vegetables or fruit, guess what? If they if they cast forth before the time that it comes to completion, it's not the best fruit. He said, I'm gonna give you the best fruit. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.
Nation is community. Nation is children with robots.